question again? I lost it already. Oh, the, the, the question is whether you're soliciting donations oh. or investments that have a return on investment. So when I talk about a return on investment to a foundation who is giving money over to this project to make it happen and to see what happens, they're going to get their return on investment because uh, we're going to be monitoring all kinds of various factors. Uh, I mentioned earlier, for example, what's happening with the other transit in the area? Is the usage of that other transit going up after we put in a PRT system? Uh, we're going to be you know, looking at uh, passenger comfort. We're going to be looking about uh, mean time between failures on, on any components that, that actually happen to break. Um, there's, we're going to find out there's just and there's a section in our uh, business plan that talks about all the different things that we're going to be learning from this system, not the least of which is, well, is this estimate of $15 million per mile realistic or not? Because the consultants keep telling us it's not realistic. So uh, we'll find out the answer to that question. And the answer to that, that, for that specific question is going to make a huge difference moving forward in how we plan our cities, whether we're going to continue with mass transit or we're going to start looking at lighter weight, personalized transit systems that might also be an alternative to high speed rail mass transit. Next. Uh, my turn. Uh, yeah, Michael Saint from Aptos. Thank you for the presentation, Rob. Um, very interesting stuff. Um, first question is, what is the support or have you approached the light rail people as well as the bus system? And are they pretty much for or against what you're doing? Um, and the next question, I'm not sure your location there in Malpitas, if you belong to a community choice energy um, system or are you PG&E? And could you go, which we have done before, we would go to our community choice energy and actually ask for grants for transportation. I don't know if they do that. What is it Silicon Valley Clean Energy or are you in a different one? It is Silicon Valley Clean okay. Energy. They yeah. supply the electrons to Milpitas. Right. And I have approached them. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier that uh, we had submitted a grant request. Well, we had actually submitted a grant request twice to Silicon Valley Clean Energy, and both okay. times we've been turned down. They're in the first time they were relatively non-specific about why they turned us down. The second time I haven't gone back to them to ask why they turned us down. Okay. Uh, they gave us a, a reason, but so what? Anyway, that's to say that, hey, it's a good idea. I totally agree with that idea, and that's why <laughs> they were my first choice in seeking funding. Yeah, it's supposed to be so, a community community choice, right? <laughs> right. So yeah. uh, the question prior to that was uh, light rail and the bus system. Have you talked to them and say, do they think it's they will increase their service if you build this? So the both the light rail and the bus system are uh, under the wings of what we call the Valley Trans Transportation Authority. And VTA, um, actually, after I you know, went to a number of their meetings and said, hey, you know, this is a great technology, you ought to check it out. They invited me on down for a, uh, <laughs> for a <laughs> session, <clears throat> during which uh, they brought up all kinds of objections or you know, things that they thought were, were uh, deal killers. Uh, and uh, Nuria, Fernandez, the, uh, the head of VTA at the time, I guess she's moved on to bigger and better. But uh, she said, hey, this is going to require a public private partnership. And I responded saying, you're right, this will. And there are companies out here that are trying to set that up specifically. And my comment was not commented upon, basically passed over. And they went right on to the next objection. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the meeting went. And if I got, you know, so and I've gone back to him a couple of times since, and uh, she's, she's just not willing to budge on it, apparently. So uh, again, you know, if 
if our systems were working properly, we would have at least done an experimental system in the last 40 years of PRT here in the country. But something's broken here and it's not happening. Yeah, yeah, it's just something off the cuff. Have you thought about approaching Tesla? Well, Tesla, as you probably know, is in, uh, has their own idea of how they want to do transit. Mm -hmm. And like me, they want to do personal transit. You know, here, just get in this Tesla car and go down this tube. They're going underground. Um, I think that people were kind of evolved to be above ground critters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, uh, and I think that, you know, the, we can do it this way. Why do it that way is right. kind of what it boils down to, unless there's a major cost difference. And they made noises like there might be, you know, they, they might be able to do their stuff for under 5 million a mile. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then, then we'd have a real conversation. You know, once we find out what this really costs, if it actually costs 15 million a mile or less, uh, you know, then, then we'd have some, Thing, something to compare and we could you know, make our decisions based on that. Yeah. In this particular area, uh, I, undergrounding is very challenging, which is why the cost of the BART borough at six mile extension from Berryessa over to uh, Duradon Station and up to Santa Clara. The BART borough is uh, estimated to cost, uh, I think, I think they're approaching seven billion dollars for the cost of that six miles now, wow. so that works out to a billion a mile. That's <laughs> a lot more than fifteen million a mile. Yeah, if you get my drift. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for the answers. Appreciate it. Uh, any other questions for either John or Rob? I do have to make a comment, I have a little disclaimer I forgot to make earlier. Uh, these are bills that are in the flow. None of them are final yet, so they can change at any time. So if you want to know the absolutely current status of whether the Sierra Club is supporting something or not, you need to call the Sierra Club California office and they will tell you whether, as the bill is currently written, if we're in favor or not, because bills are always changing. So don't go calling your uh, assembly person or senator without checking with the Sierra Club California office in Sacramento first. So a little disclaimer there, you know, that the list I gave you was as of June 7th. So it's only been a week. I don't think it's changed, but you know, people can modify bills at any time. So it's always good to check with the local office in Sacramento before you call your uh, assembly person or representative, and also because the Sacramento office will want to know. They want to know who's contacting assembly and senators and advocating for various bills so they can uh, help you with that effort. Um, and yes, I, I'm in favor of Rob's idea. I've been in favor of for what two decades now, and hopefully one of these de decades we'll see it because it seems silly to keep investing, trying to get investing in roads. On a on a related topic, so um, in 2016, VTA passed the Measure B, which is a 30-year half-cent sales tax, which is generating the $6 billion that Rob was just talking about, which is funding VTA, uh, the BART extension. But uh, at any time, two-thirds of the BART board, or excuse me, two-thirds of the VTA board could vote to redirect that funding toward anything else. So- Whoa. At any time, if you can get two thirds of the bar, bar, uh, VTA board to reallocate Measure B funds, uh, it is possible. Uh, right now, they've set aside that they're doing uh, whatever number Rob said toward BART. I think they've said it can only be a quarter of the total raised, which I think is expected to be, like he said, about $6 billion. Uh, BART can't get more than one fourth of all the funds raised, but and, and only over 30 years. Unfortunately, the way VTA is headed right now is because they are going to do this really expensive digging right now. Their most recent proposal was to fund nothing else and only fund BART for the next couple of years. So no improvements to interchanges, no improvements to local roads, no improvements. So there's a lot of people really pissed off at the uh, VTA board right now. 
And if you want to know who your uh, representative is on the on the VTA board, I can send you a list. <laughs> very interesting. Um, so it, it, it's very interesting to me, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> At $15 million a mile for uh, less than one third of the cost of what they're estimating that Bart Burrow will cost, you can get 100 miles of guideway and cover basically 100 square miles kind of an area. And that, that would be a total game changer. And you can do it for so much less than what they're talking about doing for the BART borough. So this is very interesting that they can redirect it. And all we need is two thirds, not even three fourths, huh? Well, this is at least two thirds okay, is the right thank number. you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for bicycles and pads, the bill only allocates uh, 250 million. Um, so they've already said that that will be uh, doled out at $8.3 million a year for the next 30 years. So that's all the bike and ped money we're gonna see come out of that billions and billions of dollars that were approved in Measure B, unless we get them to vote differently. <laughs> um, okay, Kristen Sandel, would you like to yeah. pose a question? Uh, yeah, I do. I had a couple questions. Um, just, I was curious if if you were able to complete the PR system, PRT system that you are, are, are working on, what would the estimated annual like operating costs of that be? And what is the expected service life of a PRT system? So thank you for the question. That's a good one. The, uh, what I'm doing is uh, taking the, the O&M costs of standard transit systems seems to be in the neighborhood of three to 5% of capital costs. So if you build, you know, a, a mile of LRT and it costs a hundred million to, to build that elevated guideway for it or, you know, the system, then you're looking at somewhere between uh, three and five million dollars a year to maintain it. Uh, likewise with bus systems and whatnot, there's three to five percent of capital costs. So okay. uh, we're actually looking at uh, a one to three percent level of, of you know percent of capital costs to be our operating costs. Now a large part of that is due to uh, not having a lot of drivers driving around and a lot not a lot of uh, deadheading uh, heading back to the barns. But there's also and then of course there's the fuel costs. Um, as you're probably aware, electric cars cost a lot less to fuel up and go a couple of hundred miles than gasoline vehicles do. So uh, we anticipate that you know that one to three percent is really going to be the area that we're going to be looking at. And when you apply that to a much less expensive uh, system in the first place, then uh, the numbers become manageable such that we think that we can cover those costs uh, which anticipated to be less than a million dollars a year through alternative uh, revenue streams. And again, we've got a list of about 10 of them that are listed there in the business plan. Okay. It looks like we've got Suzanne out here. Oh, before I go, Kristen, did that answer your question? Um, yeah, it did. And then I had another question, like what is the expected service life of a PRT system? Well, given uh, that, uh, the lifespan of any particular product largely depends on the number of parts, especially the moving parts. Uh, these PRT cabs don't have very many moving parts is the short story. Um, and so uh, there's the, the lifespan is probably going to be at least as long as we would anticipate for any other transit system that one would install. So I'm imagining a 50 year time horizon is probably our starting point. But it's, I anticipate it's gonna be something like electric cars when they started saying, okay, you, you, we're gonna sell you this leaf and it's got this battery that should take you 100,000 miles. But then the reality comes back and it looks like that battery will last 300,000 miles. So, uh, because 
because these guys have designed the system to be simple and uh, failure proof essentially because they got so much redundancy in it, we really don't anticipate uh, a short lifespan, shall we say. We do anticipate a much, much longer lifespan than we would say for a, something as complex as a bus. Pass. Okay, great, thank you. Suzanne. Yes, and I'm sorry, this is not a question for you, but for John, because this is very interesting to me though. I love the idea because I'm from Las Vegas and it's interesting watching what Elon Musk is doing over there with the, um, with the pods and everything. But, I, I um, it, yeah. but uh, my question, I mean, I'm here in San Francisco now, but John, you, you mentioned the recycling and I missed part of that. Can you please tell me which bill that is? Because I want to do more research on that because I'm, I'm huge into recycling and I'm wanting to make sure we're not putting things in that recycle bin that should not be there. Uh, well, there's more than one. There's at least three of them uh, combating different parts of the, the um, so boy, in the, in the chat, I don't know if you can see it. Brett, Brett put it in the chat. It's the link to the actual page with the documents. So I'm just going to yes. re-put it in the chat for you. Yes, I see URL that. URL and look at the the priority bill list, and you'll find all, at least three separate bills that talk about recycling. Oh, okay. Because okay, one so of them just about the um, making it easier to recycle. Um, well, okay, okay, I'm not going to go over the list again. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I can see it now. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Suzanne. Uh, Brett, you actually still have your hand up. Yeah, I had a couple more comments. I, I was just going to mention that the system in Contra Costa County is actually being done with a lot of cooperation from the bus agency. Um, Tri Delta Transit, I think it is, is very involved in it. Um, and it, it occurred to me that if you can convince BART and or VTA, but especially BART, that this PRT system will increase their ridership, it's a no-brainer for them to take a tiny pittance of that, um, you know, of that sales tax and just fund your whole system and get it done. Um, I mean, you know, it's 150 million would be 10 miles, which I think is more than enough to do the whole system, right? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, Basically, you just have to convince them it'll increase their ridership. Um, good luck. Good. I'll try that. Okay. Any any other questions? No. Well, by the way, Brent, has has that particular uh, approach worked for you there in Santa Cruz? Well, for the longest time, I just kind of accepted that they're going with rail. But very recently, the rail plans for Santa Cruz uh, County have just kind of blown up and, you know, they just didn't get the vote that they thought they were going to get to keep going forward with the, um, you know, the, they wanted to do a light rail kind of system or maybe, maybe a commuter rail. Yeah. So I'm trying to take advantage of the moment and um, get started on trying to get something going here. Um, I've been in touch with Glideways who, who are doing the, uh, the, the, the Contra Costa system and um, there's a possibility that they're gonna get involved on, in trying to get something going here. Um, now, Brett, my understanding of the Glideways system that they're proposing sounds like a lot of it is running around at grade level and uh, it's you know, elevated just for, you know, not as much of the, the 28 miles is elevated. Most of it's ground level. Is that true or? Um, I think maybe two thirds of it is elevated. Um, I mean, they they basically want a dedicated corridor just like any other PRT system. So, you know, if that can run along something, um, you know, if they, if basically if they're elevated where they need to be elevated. Okay. Um, but I, their design basically has the pod cars coming down to ground level for people to board and onboard or offboard. Um, so they're, 
I mean, they might be doing elevators somewhere, but most it looks to me like their stations are going to be at ground level, and then the pod goes up to run on the dedicated guideway. All right. Now we chose to leave our stations elevated and use an elevator slash stairs for people to access it because it's less of a uh, at the ground level footprint. Yeah, well, and it's a different kind of system. Glideways runs on rubber wheels, so it's that's kind of intuitive for it to come down and run on the road. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Where, wait is, a minute. where you know, people won't be hitting their heads on the guideway. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this uh, large system is using rubber wheels too. Pneumatic, 80 psi, rolling on steel plates, nice and quiet. That's day man. You can't get much better than that. Yeah, yeah, just can't see the wheels in normal operation. Okay. Uh, any other comments? So, so did the uh, Guadalupe group want to do anything about uh, what they've learned tonight? Well, uh, I, I, you, you asked me that before, and I said, well, we don't have that kind of money, but I can give you a platform to, to talk to, you know, a, an event. All right. So you've received our, our gift. <laughs> you may not and, have recognized uh, it. <laughs> and I understand that this is being recorded, so we'll actually be yeah. able to watch it. So um, I'll, I'll cut off some of the, uh, the the things that happen here at home. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, in, in a few days, um, uh, we, we can send it out to some others who didn't get on the email list for tonight and uh, resend it to, to um, the original group um, who, who received this. Um, Great, I look forward to sharing that. Okay. Okay, so uh, thanks again, Rob, and thanks, John, for, for your help here. Here, here. And uh, everybody have a good evening. All right, thank you. Bye, guys. Good night. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.